Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, November 22nd, 2019. And here are some of today's trends in the news. You know, today's a very, very important day in American history. But blacked out by the media. Go to New York Times, Wall Street Journal, CNN.com. 56 years ago, November 22nd, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. But that's not important. It's out of the news. I had the good fortune of being with John Connolly, former governor of Texas. The man who was sitting in front of Kennedy took the bullet in the back. And here's a photo of me, him, and his wife, Nellie, in front of the book depository in 1992. It was their first time back since the assassination. And he wanted to meet me. Here's the story of what John Connolly told me and his wife, Nellie, of what happened on November 22nd, 1963. Click on, it's right on this page. On to the markets. Stocks rose slightly on Friday, but posted their first weekly decline in over a month amid lingering worries. You know, a worries are about the China-U.S. trade talks. Every day with this stupidity, the markets have reached record highs. They're only down a little bit. All the cheap money the Fed keeps pumping in the $3 trillion since September 17th of this year into the repo markets so the gamblers could gamble. End of story. It's pushing the markets up. And Donald Trump told Fox News that the U.S. and China are very close to reaching a trade agreement. Gold. Down a bit. Dollar up, and you know why gold went down, according to uh, CNBC? Gold prices edged lower on Friday as the dollar and treasury strengthened after data showed U.S. manufacturing output and service activity picked up, limiting demand for the yellow metal. Yeah, it's bigger than that. The markets are going up. The cheap money is being pumped into the markets. The risk factor is reduced because of the cheap dough, and people aren't looking for the safe haven asset. So gold right now is floating around the 1460 mark. You've heard me say this many times. If it breaks below 1450, the bottom is 1390. And oil. Oil pulled back a little bit, but it's uh, at its highest level since late September. And one of the reasons why is those OPEC and other people are going to be meeting in early December to see whether or not they're going to keep holding back 1.2 million barrels a day because there's more supply than demand. And going back to the markets, they're overvalued. The P.E. ratio is about 26, 16.8 is about average. Hedge fund reportedly bets over a billion dollars on a big stock market sell-off soon, and this is from Ray Dalio, the head of Bridgewater Associates, the biggest hedge fund in the world. And he's been following what we've been saying. When we said the gold bull run began two weeks later, he said it. When we started talking about the Greatest Depression, he even started making the reference to the Depression. And now he's saying the gold bull run has run its course because... Fed may be done with rate curbs for a while. Big story in the toilet paper record. We say the rate cuts may be postponed in December, but by this time next year, you're going to see interest rates at zero or negative percent in the United States. Over there in China, skyscrapers fall victim to slow down in Chinese growth. The subsidiary of Chinese largest construction group has suspended work 
and one of the nation's tallest skyscrapers. After the developer became the latest in a string of companies to default on payments. In the area where they're building the skyscraper, they're looking at vacancy rates of commercial buildings at 37%. So the place has been way overbuilt. The Chinese economy is going to come down. It cannot sustain that kind of growth. But even a 6% GDP growth, the worst in 30 years, is a lot better than the one9 nine that they're looking for in the eurozone or the two percent in america but it's going to go down and when it goes down it will go down hard because there's a global slowdown and organization of economic cooperation and development calls for urgent public investment to counter feeble growth who is this feeble growth governments need to take urgent action to improve the medium-term prospects for their economies, the OECD said, as it forecast, the current weak global growth will continue for the next two years. You know what that is? Bullshit. Yes. It's going to continue beyond that. In two years, we will be in the greatest depression. So they're calling for more cheap dough. They know it's slowing down, and they're calling fiscal stimulus because the monetary methadone injections, that drug's only working so much. They got to steal more of our dough and call it building infrastructure and digital services and more. Bullshit. Bundesbank warns of perils facing Germany's lenders. Germany's banks are facing an even tougher outlook thanks to a combination of negative interest rates and a slowing domestic economy, the Bundesbank and rating agency Moody's warned yesterday. These banks are in serious problems over there. Bundesbank, these are, this is Germany. We're not talking about, you know, Colombia, but we'll talk about them later. Deutsche Bank CEO banks Lagarde's vision for Eurozone stimulus. Yeah, no kidding. As his bank is going down, this guy wants more money injected into the economy. And, of course, Lagarde is now the head of the European Central Bank. She was the head of the Europe, the International Mafia Monetary Fund uh, Federation, whatever it is, and now they moved her over to there. Deutsche Bank CEO Christian Sewing, sewing more... Oh, shit has backed European Central Bank ECB President Christine Lagarde's call for fiscal stimulus from Eurozone governments. Sometimes it's not only about fiscal stimulus itself. I think we should first look at the composition of where the investments are going. There's nothing, 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 little stupid talk. But he's sowing it. WeWork lays off 2,400 workers. I mention this because... When this economy slows down, the greatest depression really hits, these we work kind of places are going to go down big time. Again, I don't give financial advice. It's not where I put my dough. Lowe's to close 34 stores in Canada. Reported another quarter of soft sales. Macy's cuts earning outlook in run-up to holiday season. The retailer... An anchor tenant in shopping centers across the country with about 680 stores and 130,000 employees. Yeah, people that work in slave land here. I'm mentioning this because this guy from Macy's, the CEO, last year he said, oh, things are going to be great this year. And now he's, you know, hedging it a little bit. So I'm mentioning this because Macy's, Lowe's, they used to be mom and pop shops. There used to be, rather than Lowe's and Home Depot, there used to be hardware stores. There used to be men's shops, women's shops, children's shops. It's been taken all over by the bigs. And they're coming down. They got too big, they have too much debt, and they can't keep it up anymore. Yeah, maybe they should get some uh, Viagra for that. Maybe that's they'll start shooting into the retail sector. Yeah, maybe it'll come, the Fed will come up with the monetary Viagra. Yeah, so they could keep them sales up. 
What a bunch of this is disgusting. The Slimers, the low lives, all that you people love, those Democrats or Republicans or Repulsivkins to be proper in a country near you have done away with the antitrust laws so the bigs could grab everything. And they have. Yeah, they even used to have uh, stationery stores. Now, of course, we got staples, so that's just fine. And by the way, when these big conglomerates own everything, and there's a lot less diversity of product, a lot less SKUs, because they're just FUC in us, so they don't want those SKUs. They just want anything that they could buy the cheapest of and get the most of. So we don't have a lot of diversity anymore. So... Schwab closes in on $25 billion deal to buy rival TD America's trade as price war rages. Again, the bigs keep getting bigger. And on to some geopolitical news. U.S. appeal fails to sway Asia allies. And they got this story over here in the Wall Street Journal today. And... Pentagon Chief Mark Esper in Hanoi on Wednesday urged allies to jointly respond to Chinese coercion. And you see this walking down the red carpet, this little flunky jerk with his red carpets. And they, they do this all over. There are all these guys dressed up in their military drag saluting. Here's to you guys. Yes, yeah, salute. Oh, in Hanoi. In a Chinese coercion. These are the slimy lowlives. Hey, you remember that Vietnam War? Nah, maybe you're a millennial or Generation Zero. You don't remember them, huh? I do. They were drafting everybody my age, every guy. Bring back the draft. There won't be any more wars launched by the brave United States of America. Look at the Vietnam War. They killed over 3 million people, 58,000 of our soldiers, wounded over... 250,000 and destroyed the lives of millions of Americans who fought over there. And now we're doing business with them. It's okay. But let's hate China because the business of China is business and the business of America is war. And while China's going down through a downturn, by the end of this century, or even a lot earlier, China's going to be on the top and America's is going to keep going lower economically. Beijing is increasingly resorting to coercion and intimidation to advance its strategic objectives at the expense of other nations. Mr. Esper. Absolute bullshit. Yeah. The United States is the one to do that, you lying little lowlife freak. And I will call that to you in front of your face, but leave all your boys that protect you because you couldn't fight your way out of a paper bag. And I'll tell you how disgusting you are to be spreading this hate when the United States has destroyed the Middle East and is on path for more of it. And the war is heating up between Iran and Israel, with Israel going into Syria and attacking Iranian bases at will. If Could you imagine if Iranian did this to Israel or the Iranians went into a country where the United States was... Oh, the United States is only in these countries illegally, like in Syria, and bombed U.S. forces? Iran was invited into Syria by its president Assad, whether you like him or not. America's illegally in there, as they are in a lot of other countries. You like Afghanistan? No, maybe Libya is yours. The Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Obama, brought you that one. Yeah, Syria, Libya, Yemen, it's disgusting. Anyway, Espy. Espionage, yeah. White House won't say if Trump plans to sign Hong Kong Democracy Bill. The bill, titled Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act, is a test of Mr. Trump's commitment. You ready for this? This is the propaganda that they put out. Mr. Trump's commitment (laughs) to the United States historical mission of promoting human rights and democracy abroad. Human, they keep, oh yeah, like we're doing in Venezuela. Oh yeah, and I forgot about Iraq and Afghanistan. I just didn't mention them, but, you know, people can't remember anything. 
Oh, it's about freedom and democracy. What hypocrisy. He's largely tried to ignore it, meaning what's going on in Hong Kong, said Laura Rosenberger, a top national security council aide for China affairs in the Obama White House. Oh, yeah, now that's a credible source, the Obama White House, the murderer Obama. Defiant Algerian protesters reject presidential vote. The 40th consecutive week of protests. The 40th consecutive week, they're fighting against the military government. These military guys taking over government, these tough guys, I'll kill you if you don't do what I tell you. Oh, yeah, don't forget to salute. Yeah. We're the allies. 40 weeks. Protests all over the world. I've never seen it like this before. Colombia, Bolivia, Ecuador, Chile, Lebanon, Spain, Hong Kong, Zimbabwe. One country after another. But anyway, the protests keep going on. Demonstrators insist that all members of the old guard, including the interim president, is just more of the same and they're right and they're fighting. Ah, he killed as clashes rage on in Bolivia. It's all in your Trends Journal. We've been covering this in detail, again, with the implications. It's journalism for the 21st century. It's what's going on, what it means, where it's going. Knowledge is power, and that's what we're giving you. This is old news in the sense that they're not giving you the direction where it's going, what it means, and what the implications will be. Colombians join region's protest. Tens of thousands of people marched through the streets of Bogota and other big cities on Thursday as an anti-government protest that have roiled countries in Latin America spread to Colombia. Not only Latin America, all across the globe. And it's going to get worse as the Greatest Depression gets worse and more people lose jobs, and whenever we, as you know what I say, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. This president, by the way, down there, he has the grand popularity rating of 26%, and he was only elected about 14 months ago. Netanyahu corruption charges threaten to deepen Israeli crisis. Here's another one for you. You can never have enough. How many years is this guy in power? Can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. Now they got corruption charges. They still don't have a government. It looks like they're going to have another election coming up. Here, this is the prostitute propaganda, the slimy New York Times. For Baghdad protesters, quote, our patience is over. Your patience is over. Your country was destroyed by the Bushes. First old man Bush, then junior Bush. Another little Bush of... That is bullshit. You got it. A little nothing of another boy. George W. Bush is a war criminal with wolfish shits and penis Cheney and all the rest of them. And remember, I know the big time coming up next Friday. It's Black Friday. Yeah. And we can't say that anymore. That's racist calling it Black Friday. Black Friday is racist in the term. It's disgusting to associate the birth of the Prince of Peace with how good retail sales are going. I mention this because for a Christmas gift of peace, consider donating to Occupy Peace. We need to keep building our staff we need to keep pushing this forward. We will not elevate to a higher sense of being until we have peace on earth, goodwill toward men and women. Google plans to limit political advertising. Isn't that great, huh? Isn't that great? Another monopoly. Tell you, we'll tell you what to do. We're smarter than you are. We got artificial intelligence. We don't have an ounce of passion, not a drop of vibe. We are artificially intelligent, and we'll tell you what you can see, what you can read, what you can hear, when you can do it, and how. 
and no protests. Ah, talking about low lives of the first order, Obama urges Democrats to place more of a focus on defeating Trump. <laughs> Quote, everybody needs to chill out about the candidates, but gin up about the prospects of rallying behind a candidate, Mr. Obama said. There will be differences among the candidates, but we're not going to talk about them. No, no, we're not going to talk about the differences because, hey, you got Warren, my 10th grade English teacher. You got bullshit Bernie Sanders. They're going to be the leaders. Biden's going to be gone. They're going to push out Tulsi Gabbard. So don't talk about what low lives they are. Just go after Trump. And Obama knows best. This is from your Trends Journal back in the 2016 election. Indeed, despite the president and first lady's vigorous campaign stumping for Clinton at levels unprecedented in modern history, Obama campaigned more than any other sitting president. And despite Obama's declaration that, quote, I will consider it a personal insult. Remember, he's on a campaign trail. An insult to my legacy if this community lets down its guard and fails to activate itself in this election. That both he and his legacy would deeply insult it, I go on to write. Again, not only did the Democrats lose the presidency in a clear rejection of Obama's legacy and Democratic Party policy, and politicians, they lost both houses of Congress. But that's, forget about that. Everybody loves Obama. Yeah, he's great. A lying lowlife. I'm going to close Guantanamo, folks. Yeah, folks. They gave you the folk. Yeah, first day in office. And again, when he won, Congress was Democratic. He didn't do it. Libyan War. Afghan troop surge and the Syrian war, plus drone strikes that killed an estimated 4,000 people. Democratic debate draws fewer viewers. People aren't concerned about it. Again, if the election was held now, we say Trump is the winner because none of the candidates could win the swing states. Student shooter uses ghost gun built from parts. This is that Southern California high school student. The gun um, was built from parts that can be easily purchased online. I mention this because a gun laws are going to be as effective as the war on drugs. People get crazy people get all the guns they need. There are over 350 million of them in circulation in America. All this will do is take more rights from us. Just like the drug war, the war on drugs only criminalized people for little stuff like getting high with a few joints or carrying a couple of ounces. It didn't do anything to stop it. You wanted to get the drugs, you could get them. And then finally, robocalls scams escalate because they work. An oncology nurse lost nearly $340,000 conned by fake Social Security call. I got one of those calls yesterday. Mr. Salenti, your Social Security information has been seized by others in a town in South Texas. I hung up the phone. So be careful. As the economy goes down, the scams are going to keep going up, as are the scammers. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.